Okay, so uh, it is, according to the agenda, it is time to get started. So let's uh, get started uh, with our mission statement. June. Hey, hang on. Hey, okay. da Wibla's mission is to provide an inspiring forum for women to explore and advance their creative development to promote their work in the marketplace and to infuse the community with their spirit of cooperation and invention. Yes. You're here. Yeah. Thank Love you. It. Yeah. That's good. Okay. And I don't believe that we have any new members or guests. Not yet. So, <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Gosh. I made a mistake in by saying that I have to admit every. Wait, I'm just gonna say admit all. Okay. Uh, so we have a couple more people coming in. Here we go. Oh, good. So yeah, y'all, y'all missed the mission statement. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I I still think we don't have uh, any new members or guests with the last two people that just came in. Longtime members versus old members. So with that, why don't we go ahead and get started with some of our board requests. Um, Marie, Marie, who's on mute. All right. <laughs> it's because Doggy was barking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Would you like to talk about the virtual gallery a little bit? Uh, yes, I'm making one final pitch to get a visual artist. Um, if not, I'm going with plan B and that's featuring more of the one that we have in more of her work, but I love to have another person. I really had set aside, uh, the rest of this week to work on this. So if you are interested, sign up on, um, uh, uh, form, uh, what is it? No, it, no? it should be on our website. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Just sign up and and send me images. I'll, I'll get in touch with you to let you know exactly how the images should be saved and, and emailed to me. Um, so let me know, hopefully by tomorrow, we'll have another person so I can get it done quickly. I wanna make sure we launch it by by on time, by the end of the month or early or first of, of May. Maggie, please. Where do you see that? On the website. On the website. The form oh. is on the website. Um, Where? Under what? Under events and ex uh, virtual exhibition, I believe. Okay. okay. Yeah. And I, I just need about seven to eight images, and you will get two walls. Yeah. It's a good deal. That's all I got. <laughs> okay. Do we have, thank you. You know, it's a great opportunity, you guys, because um, you can share, you can share these images and and the site as well. Um, and share it, share the link with all your followers and on your social media. Exactly. So you can put it in email and social media. It's a great deal. And the price is right. Yeah, um, zero. Do we, <laughs> it's a good price. Um, do we have an update on anything with the awakening uh, edition? I can I can put the the timeline on the chat. Uh, let me see real quick. The dates. All right. So the submission starts on the fifteenth of May, and it runs until the end of uh, June. Then that'll give the uh, juror who will be Rosa Ana Orlando a chance to spend the month of July doing her doing the the jury jury in and uh, and then I'll have the month of August to uh, to curate it. Um, it will go live on September 1st. We'll have the virtual opening on the 2nd of September and it will run through the end of October. So it'll be up for two months. And I just posted all those dates on the chat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we're still working on some other things behind the scenes. So stay mm -hmm. tuned for that. Yeah. 
their. Um, oh, you'll, you'll be able to sign up beginning the 15th of May on the website. Great. And uh, yeah, Gladys and Maria have been working very hard behind the scenes to get this pulled together for y'all. And I think, I think you're gonna be very pleased. Thank you. Um, literary, literary, the other Gladys, Gladys. Any, any update um, on the Laporte? It's up and running and uh, oh, as it is up and running. It seems like it's doing pretty well. There's some, been some folks uh, visiting and and uh, they're happy that we did get it to them. And, you know, within basically the time frame, and they're happy to have a program because uh, it is it is a, a poetry month and then to have a, a, a the, you know, the month honoring poets and to have local poets been able to pull this together. So they're real happy with us and that they, they thank us. They really did, which is which is nice. <laughs> they can't wait to have us back in person again. <laughs> Boy, howdy! Yeah, and I, I, noticed, oh, I noticed the date on it said March, so some people were confused about that when I directed them to. March? I think it said March or something. Uh -huh. but, uh, not not on our part, but just to get to it, that black screen that said Weevla. Uh, they the library has it as dated March, but anyway, I thought so. Okay, mm. I went straight to the um, link. I didn't because you know you sent the link to everybody, um, and so I went to the link. But I will ask him about that. I didn't go through because I just looked at the link and, and went that way. <laughs> no, my, I that. Yeah, they posted it. I think the sixth or the seventh. Now we made the video in March, I believe. Yeah, March fifth. Yeah, that's yeah. That. So maybe, oh. maybe the video day is the timestamp is oh. at. But that's um, but yeah, it was and it was um, uploaded to YouTube in March as well. So that maybe that's maybe that's what you're seeing. Uh, we we you know we we did it ahead of time. We did ahead. Yeah, it was March yes. 13, and thank 14, you. to 15. Yeah, thank you so much for our to our poets who made that happen. Okay, thank you. Um, is Ellen is Ellen on the call? Ellen, yes, see. she is. Oh, there you are. You're down. <laughs> I did. <don't. laughs> yeah. There's there's a bunch of you here. Um, I didn't know if you had any additional news. I haven't had a chance to talk with you. No, no, I have no additional news. <laughs> okay. I think not a Zippo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so so um, we're down to talking about some special projects, and so I will turn it over to Gretchen. I'm going to turn it over to Gretchen for a long time here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put my, my talking tiara on. There. <laughs> it just reminds me I need to be professional. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Um, there we go. And share. Okay, I am going to talk about what we have been wanting and needing for a very long time. Uh, the member directory, the member area of our website. Yeah. So oh, dang excited about it. <laughs> Let me move this down. Okay. If you go to the Wibla website and you have, you have you have, you're, you don't have a user, you know, ID, password, you're going to go to member login. If you're not currently a member, if your membership has not recently expired, you'll go to member login because we still have all the records. And you're gonna come over here. If, if you're set up, you'll be signing in with your email and password. Otherwise, you'll request a password. Hit that. And you type in the email that you use that, that we have a record for and you'll request a password. The, the computer will email that to you and use that to set up your account. Now, once you get into your account, you're going to see all my info, which is fine. Okay. And all these things you can 
add um, some of the fields will be populated already just because administratively we already have information about you. Um, the about section if you want your address to show, I have my studio address. You don't have to have your home address in here. And in fact, there's, I'll show you in a minute, if you don't want anyone to know your address, you can, you can um, say, don't, don't show it. But you input all this information. If you're a regular member, if you're, if you want to update the credit card, if you want to renew, if you want to upgrade, um, et cetera, this is where you would do it. And wait a second, notice what it says there, Just that your membership expires oh, yes. on November 9th. Oh, yes. yes. I last renewed November 9th of 2020. So wow. we don't, we're not going to have the situation where everyone drops off the rolls as of December 31st, and then we have to start over from scratch each year. Oh. Ah, with... By November 9th, the system will email me and remind me to renew. Oh, okay. Thank you. So once you get all this information in there that you want, you can continue. It'll take you to the next tab, profile. If you don't want your profile in the directory at all, if you're just an extremely private person, whatever, you hit don't enter, don't list in directory. If you don't want any of us to know your street address, click that okay. for don't show street address. Excuse me. Bye. Bye. Love you. <laughs> Going to work. Okay. Um, right here, the business card. This is where you would put your picture and just a short blurb of what you do. Arrow and down the profile gallery. Oh, nice. You can nice. put in like a piece of writing, a piece of artwork, anything you want. And right here is where you upload images. And it could be like a book cover, or, you know, if you're, a, if you're a writer, anything. magazine, mm. yeah, whatever. Yeah, anything that you want to highlight your work. Go down to profile description Here's where I'm using this as an expansion on my bio slash artist okay. statement. Okay. Any other social links I have, I put down there. Any genres that I want, I put I'm both literary and visual. Then I save and continue. Additional, if say there's a I have my own personal name is in here, but I also have, you know, my a business, a business name or business phone number. That's where I would add this. Mm -hmm. um, volunteer opportunities, and we are always well. Once we go back to life, we are always looking for volunteer opportunities. Mm -hmm. And even now, we're not live, but we still need your minds. We still need volunteers. So if you want to volunteer, please. Get in touch with this. Save and continue. Okay, and that's it. I'm all saved. Now, if you go down here, these are people that are current members. They just have not filled out their profile yet. You just saw mine. So this is what mine will look like to any of y'all. Okay, here's my picture. Here's my sharp blurb. Just hit somewhere on that. Okay, I have all the pictures I uploaded, my statement, and here's this information here, my address, my phone number, and my um, website, and here's my social media links that I can just click to go to those particular pages. So one thing about this, y'all, you know, you saw that option about not displaying the address. Mm -hmm. The address is never displayed unless <laughs> someone has logged into this website, meaning a member. Right. right. So and I will show y'all that in a minute, what it looks like to an outsider. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, this, uh, it's okay if you want to show them mine so that we have that invitation there. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I already have your name down there to show up. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I didn't realize I was ahead of schedule. Good. <laughs> no, you're no, doing and great. You, 
And you see these these little labels right here. I'm on the board, I'm literary, I'm a member, I'm visual. Over time, as we see the need, we may be adding or taking away labels. It's just, we need more data from y'all as we figure out what to do. So in theory, if someone, one of us wants to do a search and it's like, okay, I wanna see all the visual people. I wanna see all the literary people. I wanna see who's on the board, that type of thing that can be of value to you. Is the phone number going to be public too? I'll show you now. Okay. okay. Now, let me go back to my account. I'm going back to, okay, to my member login. I'm going to sign out. Okay. Now, I'm a stranger entering this. And I was like, huh. I think I'm going to mine this website for a lot of information and, you know, give them information about their car warranty. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <Member> directory. <laughs> well, let's see. Okay. Um, well, Debbie Bloomberg, let's see. She, okay. She doesn't have any info, any contact information on there. Okay. Now, uh, let me close that out. Let me look for Gladys May. Nope, I don't know how to get it, other than going to her Facebook page. But mm -hmm. if she has her settings, you know, on like friends only, you aren't going to get anywhere there anyway. And if you're going to do a search engine search on her name, if her, her Facebook profile is set to public, you'll find her that way anyway. So we're not giving away anything that you don't want people to know. Um, let me, let's see. Da, da, da. Oh, let I, me show you. Oh, do that's Here's Kathleen Davis. Okay. 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 Um, da, da, da. Okay, <laughs> what she did, this whole section, what I had used under profile description for my artist, artist bio, she's using to talk about her new book. So this information is what oh, she yeah. was trying to get to out to our membership. Mm, and so, this is this is actually an invitation. Wow. I'm sorry. This is actually an invitation from Magpies and Peacocks for uh, all the Weevla members to attend the, it's gonna be a book reading from my book and also a fundraiser for the Maker, M-A-K-R Collective, which right. works with people who have been in abusive situations, right. particularly trafficking. And so yes, I, I told them I would let you, everyone know so that they're okay. invited. Kathleen, as long as Kathleen. Um, well, let's see, everyone who's on this meeting now is looking at this and they now know where to go to get the information. Mm -hmm. awesome. We will make sure that between tonight and tomorrow morning, this information is also on our Facebook member page. Okay. I mean, I, it may be just a simple a copy paste on in a post on that. It's going to be out of date pretty soon though for her, for her contact page. So yes, but then it's up to her whether she wants to leave that on there or okay. whether she wants to update it with something else. Okay. I mean, that's just like that's a good point. Of, yeah, that's like any of us with our Facebook or website or whatever. Okay. We just wanted to make sure that it's up to us to promote our own selves and keep you have to remember to do that if you're if you put some so so if I could interrupt here just a second. Yes. This there is so much that you can do that we can do now with this website, that it's truly a portal for you guys. The thing is, if we showed you everything, it would be like taking a sip of water with a fire hose. But yeah. one of the really cool features is that you will be able to enter information on the calendar. So if you're logged in, uh -huh. you can go to the calendar and you can add an event. So Kathleen would be able to add this event yeah. on the calendar. <laughs> Oh, so can. there are member events and there's organization events and, and such. So we, you can't, you can't add a board meeting or a, a, a member meeting, but you can add a, a 
personal, you know, a personal thing. It might be a reading like this one, or it, you could be having an exhibition. I mean, there's just all kinds of things that right now we've been putting it on maybe Facebook or, you know, sharing events and stuff, but you will be able to put it on here and yes. you can, you know, have tickets or what, even free tickets and all, all kinds of things. So there'll be more information coming because I don't want your head to explode. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, Lee. Um, one very big point that, that Melody is dancing around is this involves member responsibility. You are, you get to add this on here, but it's your job to maintain it. You know, mm -hmm. when people going on there and then they see things for events that are a long time ago and they haven't been. So it is your, this is a privilege of being a, and a perk of being a member of WIBLA, but you've got to, um, yeah, if you put timely things on there, make sure you update when that event is over. If you've got new things, yeah, refresh it and, and please maintain it so that it reflects uh, well on WIVLA that we have members actively doing this. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a fantastic opportunity to connect. So, but, but be reminded because WIVLA doesn't have time to chase everyone around and tell them you need to update this and monitor yeah. everybody's listing, right, Gretchen? And that's why the <laughs> calendar is so excellent, right? Because yes. it's a calendar. Right. Um, and so and as time goes on, you know, I mean, we just, we got this live now and that took a lot, you know, I mean, over the past few months, um, we got the new website. Now we got the member area. And as time goes on, and we identify things and add things and figure out how to do certain things, we'll be adding various, you know, like to, to members, like uh, there may be a workshop and, you know, y'all may get get word of it before the, outs, before the public gets it. I mean, I'm just like throwing that out there, but there's going to be benefits to getting your information on there and keeping it updated. So you'll be informed about different things. So We're thank you. To make this website very user-friendly. Yeah, and we've, like she said, we've just gotten started and there will be more information coming. We've made a video. I've got uh, the president's message in the main newsletter has the step-by-step -step on how to do this as well. But um, as much fun as this is, I mean, cause there's nothing much more fun than software um, we need to move, <laughs> move on to, thank you so much, Gretchen. We need to move on to the really big shoe, um, which is the uh, presentation of how we spent $4,000. So, yay. So we're going to, I'm going to turn it over to Gretchen. I'm just going to be quiet. Tiara again. <laughs> I don't, I didn't bring a talking tiara, so. Well, you know what? You know, I, I'm trying to start a trend here. Okay. So my... far, no one's taken a hint. Okay, Echo Fund. Since we started this in 1999, um, once a year, we give a, out $2,000 grants, one to a literary, one to a visual artist. And those grants, the artists have to apply and they have to tell us what their project's gonna be about. It can be just a barely formed idea in mind. You know, they don't need specifics and the project will more likely change over the year after they win. Um, but this is to, their project needs to fall in line with our mission statement. You know, it needs to either Come on. Okay, it needs to advance your creative development. It needs to promote your work in the marketplace, or it needs to infuse the community with your spirit of cooperation and invention. <laughs> so what we do ask on the application, just give us a brief little blurb about it and how is it gonna advance Wibbless mission? Um, and since then, between then 1999 and now, we have given out $44,000. That's 44 women who have had grants, who have used that to 
pour into their work and advance specific artistic projects and fulfill our mission. And I think that is just so awesome. I'll say that without any bad words. Okay. Uh, the ECHO Fund is it's educational and cultural opportunity grant. And like it's and okay, 2019, we it was our 25th year. And so we decided to do something special. I believe, I think Lee was the one that brought that idea. Um, just to honor how, who, who was it? It was Melody. <laughs> it was the treasurer actually, yes. Okay, it was Melody. Let's okay. <laughs> um, But Lee championed it. Um, and so we decided in honor of the 25th year, we were doing good, we were in a good place. We were gonna give out four grants, two literary and two visual. And so we did. And and what we do though, the process is everyone turns in their applications and then we have two boxes, one for literary, one for visual. And then it's a blind drawing. You know, you have to submit the application. The application has to be filled out correctly. Um, but then it's a blind drawing. Okay, so Deborah Blinberg, Gladys May Bullock, Maggie Baldwin, and Melody Locke were the four winners. They were the grant recipients. Okay, so that was done in April 2019. And 20, they were to have presented. However, um, well, COVID happened. You know, we we're hit with a, 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 a pseudo apocalypse. <laughs> but so, you know, our meetings went dead for a couple of months and then we went back to Zoom and we're playing with that. And then we realized, you know, this, we may be doing this for quite a while. So we, we knew everyone was just trying to get their sea legs under them, just learning how to live in this different time. And so we weren't going to ask those presenters to present. We said, y'all can have extra time. In the meantime, we still needed to pick winners for 2020. So we did that. We picked in September of 2020. Last year, we picked two winners who will present this September. However, getting back to our four 2019 winners. Well, they're going to be presenting tonight. And they're going to tell us what they did with their $1,000. And I think that's it. Okay. And so, Melody, did I cover everything? Yes. And we should be starting with literary. We'll okay. end with visual. Okay. And, and everyone who's not speaking, please mute. So am and Debbie, I, am I yes, Debbie, you, you okay. should be able to share your desktop. All right, I'm going to share. Let's see. All right, do we see a PowerPoint oh. here? Uh, Thumbs up, PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, play from the start. All right, cool. Move you guys off to the side here. Okay, so thank you, Wibla, for my money. Um, very appreciative of this. Um, advance, oops. There we go. So we're starting at the end. Um, <laughs> so basically, um, getting this money through the Eco Fund. Um, led to me being able to finish a first draft um, of my novel, which um, feels great. <laughs> um, so my novel is historical fiction, and it's based on a true family story. Um, I have my little pitch, my elevator pitch here that I can read to you guys. So you, this is the this is the short synopsis of what this the novel is about. Um, so from the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, Sadie Gertz, an Austrian immigrant from the Lower East Side, 
and her New York City department store magnate husband, Harry, save a group of European Jews from the Holocaust with the help mm -hmm. of the world leader. Um, and Sadie and Harry are my great grandparents. So um, I've been working on this since I was pregnant with my first child who will almost be eight. Um, it's a very long time. Uh, I've been working full time since then, whether it's freelance or in an office job. So really like squeezing this in at night and on the weekends. Um, I started working on it in New York and um, really like took advantage of all the resources there. So spent lots of time in the archives um, in New York City, researching, you know, my great grandparents and how they came over here from Europe. Um, and then also looking into ship records because um, there, there had been this family story floating around for years, but there were no details. Um, so using my journalism skills, all I had was the name of the boat and just very vague details that there were these, you know, seven um, European Jewish refugees. Um, so I ended up finding on a ship list their names. Um, they were they're actually crossed out, which I won't go into why, but they, they ended up getting off the boat at a certain point. So I guess the the ship folks crossed them off. Um, but it was very hard to read their names. So I went through this whole process to like be able to read the names and um, then ended up tracking down their descendants um, have, have relationships with some of them, which is really cool. Um, but so I, I'll tell you a little bit more about the book. I have some cool pictures and then I'll tell you how I spent my money. Um, so, okay, so oh, wow. that's nice. this here on the right, this is Sadie. Um, I have no idea where this picture was taken or when, but I'm assuming she was maybe late teens or early 20s. Um, she was a very free spirit. She often like dressed in men's clothes to be shocking and she was <laughs> just quite a character. Um, she came over to this country when she was about a year old from, um, from like the Austria-Hungary area um to escape like anti-semitism and she ended up growing up in the Lower East Side so this is a picture from the Tenement Museum which I love in New York City um so this would have been kind of what her street probably would have looked like growing up um in the you know very poor these poor buildings with you know not good lighting and just, just like very bad living conditions. Um, but a lot of Jewish immigrants lived lived in, in the tenements back. And so she came over like with her family in the late 1800s. Um, so Sadie, she grew up there. She, she dropped out of school when she was like 10 or 11. because she had to help her family make money. And I think she ended up working in like a matchbook factory or something. Um, and then she eventually went back to get her GED. Um, but then she ended up meeting Harry. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, this is a picture of him from the First World War, thinking. <laughs> I love that. Um, and he was born in the US. Um, his parents came over from Russia, also to escape anti-Semitism and pogroms. Um, so he was born here and his father, so my great, great grandfather um, started a stationery shop in Queens, New York. And then over the years grew that business to a major department store in the city. And it was called Gertz. You can see um, over here, like on the left side, this is the sign. Um, so it was, it was a big department store in Queens on Jamaica Ave was the flagship location. Um, and Harry ended up, you know, running it once his dad went to the countryside on a farm that they, they bought when he retired. Um, so that is Harry and Sadie. So in the late 1930s, um, Harry and Sadie decided to get away for their 20th anniversary trip and they, they board this boat. Um, and this, these are pictures, um, I think, these aren't necessarily pictures of this boat, but it's sister ship. So, and it had similar interiors, um, just so you could kind of get a sense for what the boat looked like. So they they boarded um, 
the ship to have a nice kind of getaway. They were going to go to Cuba and Mexico um, for a couple of weeks. And it was like, um, it was a freight ship. It was carrying bananas down in the hull and doing a lot of deliveries. And it had very few passengers. It wasn't like a, you know, luxury, luxury ship. They, they took kind of funky cruises. <laughs> um, so they were on this boat and um, they end up coming into contact with these um, seven Jews who are in the bottom of the ship um, who had escaped from Austria with Mexican visas and they find themselves on this ship. Um, and basically there are a whole series of events, but it turns out that there's no country that's willing to take these Jews in. Um, and my great grandfather, he was on the board of the Joint Distribution Committee, which is a, it's still in existence. It's like a Jewish aid organization based in New York. So he had, he knew a lot about what was going on and had all these connections. Um, so he and my great grandma end up helping these Jews um, with the assistance of this world leader who I'm keeping a secret. <laughs> so you'll buy the book one day, um, but who ends up boarding the ship and you know has the power to help them um, and yeah, so these these are a few of the Jews. I got these pictures from the sun. So this guy here, this is Ernie. This is him here. And then over here, this woman is his sister, um, Mimi, and her husband, Egon. Mm -hmm. So Ernie, um, Ernie is the father of the guy that I now kind of am friends with. He He's like in his, I don't know, 70s. He lives in Cleveland and he he sent me these pictures and all this information and he wasn't really aware of like my great grandparents and he was super excited to hear you know this piece of the story that he didn't know um so that that's been very very fun and okay how i spent my money so um after i finished the first draft um i just wanted to get like a good look at the whole thing and you know, start to do an initial edit. So I, um, I went to FedEx and got um, the whole thing kind of bound as a, like an actual book. Um, I got one for myself and then I got one for my mom um, and another reader. So a couple of those and it, it's a little, it can be expensive to print those. So, um, and then I bought a bunch of books that I use for research, um, nonfiction and stuff like, um, like a book about the Jews in Vienna um, in the late 1930s, which was super helpful for just kind of recreating um, what it was like for the Jews before they left Europe. Um, before COVID, I spent some time um, at the, the Writing Barn, I think it's called, I'm totally blanking, but in Austin um, as a retreat just to get away and do a little writing. And then I've taken a few courses um, with the Writers League of Texas, which um, they have some really great classes um, that have really helped. So the first one I did um, was on composing a query letter. So I'm, I'm kind of far, well, maybe not that far, but uh, I'm not quite ready to start querying agents, but I wanted to have a query letter kind of ready to go and start thinking about that. So I took a class, it was with the um, executive director, Becca Oliver, who used to be an agent herself. Um, so we submitted kind of a draft query um, and then she gave us like personal feedback and we each had a call with her to go over the letter. And I feel like my letter is in really, it's in pretty good shape um, after that class. So that's, it's good to have that squared away and ready to go when I'm, when I'm ready to send it out. Um, and then the second one I took was writing ensemble cast. Um, since I have so many different characters, which can be hard to juggle, um, it was it was great to to have that class and kind of get different tips on on how to handle all the different characters. Um, so I just put some bullet points of a few interesting things from the class, like all characters need to have a role and their chance in the sun, make them equally important. Um, and it really, it made me think more deeply about my characters and, and kind of improve, improve on them. Um, and I think that might be it. Is there another slide? 
And uh, no, that's it. So if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer anything. <laughs> Was it historical fiction? Is it gonna be is it gonna be a historical fiction? Or yeah, it's gonna be fiction. I started it as nonfiction, but I I wanted to be able to describe things that I didn't know for sure. And there's also some discrepancies in like what exactly happened. Like nobody really knows for sure what went down exactly on the boat. So I want to be able to imagine it and like imagine it. yeah, those I love those kind of books. Nice. So mm. I will be waiting to read that. <laughs> As I identify with all the background to material. So yeah. Very nice. closely. So <laughs> cool. Yeah. I'd like to give a shout out for the um, the museum you referred to. The um museum? the one in New York. It's not the immigrant museum, it's the what the tenement museum. Yeah. It's it's fantastic, isn't it? I hadn't heard about it before I stumbled on it, and it's worth a visit. I've yeah. visited it twice. It's 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 definitely worth a visit um, when you can do it in public and see the different tenement. You need to be able to walk up steps because you're going to be going up into the tenement. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seeing three model apartments and seeing how they lived and worked right. in the same same space. Yeah. Just incredible. They're doing some virtual kind of tours. It's not, I mean, it's not the same, but they're doing some neat stuff. Online. They did a virtual tour, I think Tuesday on, I think it was last Tuesday through the J and they've done another one through the J and it was probably more of a lecture. I didn't go to it, but um, it was about the 1918 uh, flu, Spanish flu epidemic. Yeah. And it was through that tenement museum. They have they have a really excellent gift shop around the holidays too. And it supports the museum, so give it a plug. <laughs> I think it's I think it's so wonderful that you have put pulled all these strands together. Thank you. Yeah. And full disclosure, Kay's in uh, my writing group, so she uh <laughs> Disclosure. I'm in. I we're, we know each other's work a bit, but <laughs> but it's a it's a complicated story that has a complex and of course very emotional background. So uh, Debbie's Debbie's doing it. She's pulling all those strands together. I'm I'm eager for the book to come out. We can't yes. wait, Debbie. Yay, Debbie! It seems to be <laughs> prime time for publishing books like this because I I got the one that um from the, I guess it's the J, um, from the book, the next talk, um, which where they they leave Vienna for um, South America. Oh yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, so there's a lot of books, some better written than others, and I'm sure yeah. they're pretty well written, um, about mm -hmm. World War II, and people are ready to know what was happened and talk yeah. about it. At this point, I'm, I'm working on the second draft. I, I've been doing some rewrites to kind of, I got feedback that there was a little too much backstory. So I've been rewriting some of the backstory in the present tense and just making my way through the whole book with an eye for that. And so after, after that's done, then I'm gonna figure out what to do next. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that's nice good. Okay. All right. Hope to Thank see you, you at the Jewish Book Fair at the local <laughs> at the local writers event. I know. I plan to be there. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm in charge of um, Gladys's. Okay. <laughs> it's my time now. Huh? Yeah. Hi, Gladys. There's my PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, okay. One second, Gladys. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> and. Uh, Uh, yeah. well, I've spotlighted her, so whenever you're ready to share, yeah, uh, Debbie. Yeah, am I am I still sharing? No. <laughs> okay, let me go back to. Okay. Ah, good. There we go. All right. Ah. I want to say, first of all, I, I, I'm so grateful 
for all y'all who have this great the, uh, handle on technology. Uh, I, 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 that's my first thing. I think that uh, years have passed me and, and that I, I'm such a guerrilla marketer that now it's, it's, the, it's the technological age that I've got to get up to speed with. My journey with this mm -hmm. workshop started some 26 years ago. And by me pinning of my first poem in uh, February of 1995. So this has been a very long journey. And the pinning of that poem entitled Step, uh, and, I, and I won't recite the poem, but maybe I will. Uh, that pinning of the poem is how this workshop came to being. And I was sitting in my, uh, so my, my, my presentation won't be a lot of slides. It will be about five slides. I have been on this journey some 26 years. I have gone through the book festivals. I've taken courses at the Writers League of Texas. I've even met with agents and book liter literary publishers and they all tell me one thing. You're extremely talented, but you need to sell your work yourself. So I, I didn't, I, I said, okay, so what I did was I created something that used that uses both poetry and prose, and I was I was referred to a book called uh, to a book called Crank, which is about some kind of person using meth methamphetamines and all that crack to show that that had been done before. But my poetry and my prose is somewhat different. It's almost autobiographical, and it has a lesson. And I didn't know that was happening some twenty six years ago. Would every event every i've gone speech from 3m to ut to radio stations to being on poetry uh radios and on austin that this was preparing me for what y'all have allowed me to kind of almost get to finality am i going too long i know i'm supposed to have five minutes no you're do you're great and so what's happened is that the first I don't know, 20 years, I did much research, many readings, book, book signings, Barnes and Nobles, Book Woman, uh, Houston Tillerson College, UT. I've been all over doing this, but I, I, I lack the confidence in knowing that I really had something to say. And so when people see the graphics, I spent a lot of the money on the graphics and I didn't understand why that was important, but my students who I conducted firsthand research from for the last 17 years, but even as late as today, when I had students in my class, I had them see the new stuff that I'm going to show you and the old stuff where y'all have, and they said, oh, this is right on point. This is what I, and it's just amazing how technology even though I could be saying the same thing, but because it's fun it differently. Are y'all able to see, oh, kind of so they can see the whole slide. Uh, can you move to the next slide? So it's entitled steps, starting to experience progress, participation builds self-esteem and K self-confidence. See, I even created a new word because I have the now the self-confidence, which I like for people to discover. And it is, it is copyrighted. And so that's what my whole workshop's about. It is about how this, i say at that time I was 34, how I have went on this journey of figuring out questions to why I made choices in my life and writing about it. And every poem is, is a piece of my world. I want you to go to the next slide. I'm not gonna keep, because I know we're going to, next slide, please. There we go. And so, the graphics, as you can tell, I've had this revised. That I, it's so far is sixty-four different poems, sayings, thoughts, and I had this is a lot of work, and I've had them edit it and change it. But I write the text, and I want them to throw in what you want to throw in, and I and I change a lot of it. And you say what poetry in me? Poetry allows me to pour out my emotions that reveal me to you, with the ultimate. My ultimate goal is for you to see a little of me in yourselves. 
I started this journey some, some 26 years ago. And so I was 34 and today I am 61. And on this journey, I have talked to students from the 13 and I've also done, I have been conducting workshops. The last one I did was in 2019, where this was, this was so, the, the, the adults were like, oh my God, everybody needs to get this workshop. The children, <laughs> so over the last, I don't know, 17 years that I've been in that district, I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. So that's why I use both poetry and prose, because I talk about it and then I recite it. Let's go to the next slide, please. And, and, I, and every, and, and this is, Cow down by yells. This invisible canyon echoes no respect. This is dealing with our self-talk. And I'll have my audiences, whether they're in, in high school or whether they've been in the prison system or whether they're educators, we actually work through step by step. Because in my humble opinion, I do believe that what we, what we yell, if any of us have ever been to a Grand Canyon, <laughs> and what is you, what you yell out or what you think is what you hear. So if you're echoing self-respect, no respect, if you're echoing, I'm wonderful, that is what you internalize. And the whole, the whole gist of my, 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 my website is about self-discovery. And I want to say it is not, a, not just for teenagers. It is, I started in this middle age and now I'm on the other side of life and I'm still discovering things about myself because I work this every morning I wake up and I move my feet, I move my mind, and I, even at 61, I change. I figure out why I make choices in my life when I was 30 or when I was 17 or when I was 57. I st I'm still evolving. You too are still evolving. So if you look at the bottom of it, each, each page, could you, could you scroll up a little bit? No, no down, I'm sorry, because I'm on the next slide. It talks, you see the steps. Oh, you're missing it. See the steps, see the step. You missed the step. Each mm -hmm. one has your thoughts and comments because each, each poem, each thought, you, the participants, will be able to write down and jog down things. And that's what the step is. It's very small things that we do to figure out what's going on and why we did things. Mm -hmm. And most of us, most of us are so afraid to discover who we are because of that, because we are awesome individuals and we're afraid that if we take a little time in silence, which is a poem, we really do, we really do discover some great things about ourselves. Most of us numb ourselves, whatever we're doing, we don't take the time. This workshop, whether it's 45 minutes or a three hour workshop, it's, and it's nothing, it's a workshop that is a lifelong process. I started at 34 and I'm still doing it at 61 and it works because now I know why I married the man that I married. Now I know why I didn't take certain jobs, why I know why it took me so long to feel this self-confident. It took me to discover those things in myself. It wasn't going to a, a psychoanalyst or a therapist or this. I had to sit and figure it out through my self-talk through figuring out why, what were the relationships and, and all this is covered in this as of right now is 64 lessons and 64 points, but I really have up to 74, but I cut some out. Let's go to the next slide. This is nurture and, 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 and you can see each one. It's, I gave you food, not knowing the nutritional value it would have now. I gave you food so when I am unable to see you or unable to hold you or unable to tell you how much I love you, you would still be fed. You see, the food I gave you would last through times of confusion and disbelief. The food I gave you will guide and protect you. The food I gave you would last a lifetime. So I hope to give to whoever is in the room with me food that will last a lifetime because most of us, most of us have never taken the time to discover the beautiful people or maybe the, even the unbeautiful people we are. We've been told certain things. And I, as an African-American woman, lived through many, many, many things that I was told. I remember when I was in college and I made a C in my English class and Miss Pierce said, that's good for a black person. I remember the subtle racisms that you shouldn't do this or that. So I have a different perspective, but does that make me bitter? No. 
But now I understand why things were said to me. Maybe that was the catalyst of why I needed to keep writing this workshop. And I didn't know a workshop was being born in me. Let's go to the next slide. This one is about opposite. This is a deep one. This one was written when I was coming back from Vancouver doing a marathon. And I was in so much emotional turmoil. And I won't go through, but it was about how the, this is about rejection. Have you ever felt, have any of y'all ever felt rejection before? Ah, uh -huh. you see, you wanted me to be right, but I left. You wanted me to smile, talk right and walk right and even breathe right, but I left. You wanted me to make friends right, eat right, talk right, sleep right, just be right. Sorry, I left. When I talk about some, have y'all left the relationships because emotionally being devoid? You see, these are the types of things that I go through. And most folks say, what do you mean you, you, you left? I, I'm emotionally went away. And we don't know why we leave certain relationships, but we are, when, when things are so dogmatic and so imposed on us. So the workshop is all about self-discovery. And many, many, whether they're adults, whether they're kids, they do one simple thing. They usually end up saying, thank you. The teachers on the campus come to my classroom weekly and needing, I need a word. These are not words. They, these, this is a piece of my, when I told you it was, more, it was more, May the 13th of 1988, 1998, I can tell you exactly where I was on the plane flying back from camp when I penned this poem. Simple as it may, I remember the pain that I went through. Oh, thank you. I remember that. And if I and my thing is connect with my art, connect with people, because I, as I tell, I'm leaving off this earth. Well, I'm not going to be here forever. If I can say something and let you know that you can pinch me and breathe, and this is what's real, it is real. And if I can say that you can have one simple thing, find some joy in your life, the midst of all of this, you can. So let's go to the next page. I get involved in the work. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I get involved, and then so, reach. And when I stop being ashamed of the gifting, when I stop being ashamed of my writing because I, I was different as a kid, not only different, I, I, I don't think in the same rim. I, I, and I started opening up with my poetry. Poetry gave me a voice that prose never has and never will. You see, I reached out and saw there were other women just like you and me. I reached out and realized that it is possible for except me for me. I reached out to all of my beautiful sisters and now we are free. When I say sisters that are hurting, sisters that have been neglected, sisters that have been feeling shame, feel, sisters that feel guilty, I'm talking about me. I bet there's a little piece of somebody I touched tonight that you need to make things. And as long as you stay closed up, you live in this ignorance, you live, but sometimes ignorance can protect us until we're ready to reach out, till we're ready to go to the next level, until we're ready. And it takes time because we, I would have never, if y'all had, I would have never been this confident in what I'm saying some 30 years ago, young, had my master's degree, had two master's degrees. I'm married on the school board at a Catholic school. I look like, and that's what I, I look like I had everything going for them. I had a husband and three kids, but they didn't know that was some hidden pain. I was, I was silent. And today, and, and when I wrote that first poem, Step, some 26 years ago, I took a step for me. Yes, I was afraid, but still I took a step for me. And I knew I wanted to achieve and step-by-step self-confidence and self-discipline began to develop step-by-step. And that's why step is a progress. You never stop. As long as you're eating and breathing and dealing with emotions, you must work your magic of knowing what's going on with inside of you. Because if not, people will not allow you to reach out. People will shut you down. Because maybe some of us are still a little odd. Let me go to the next slide, please. I'm sorry, I just get involved in it. The next slide is, is that the last one? Oh, I had so many. The, uh, it, it, and so I wanted to show some of the graphics uh, and, and I wanted it to be bright and brilliant. I wanted it to show, and I do talk about each of the, this particular uh, booklet will have right now six, like six, 64 
different poems, but they're not just poems, they're, they're thoughts and words, and we work through the book. That one, I can do a 45 minute workshop, which I kind of showed y'all last week, 45 minutes when I did that uh, with, with the grown folks who were like counselors and teachers and everybody, they said, you, we need more, we want more of this. And I said, well, I'll have a workshop, but now I have a three hour workshop. And because of Wivla, I've been able to, to do that. So my research has been me personally going out in the public and getting opinions. Everything I've said, I've ha I always have folks write, write. I say, you can write anything you want. And I'm to my surprise, uh, to my surprise that I'm supposed to be doing what y'all have blessed me to be able to do because the confidence and to be able to get the money to do it. Uh, and I will continue to run my, 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 my first, I guess, well, I'm not, not my first, but I will be marketing to the Girl Scouts because I've been a Girl Scout leader for over 25 years to, to, to do the workshop for not just, not just the girls, but for uh, the leaders. And it's not a workshop just for women. No, it's not just for women. It's for people who are trying to figure out some stuff. And see, so you, you, you have to figure it out. When you go to a psychologist or, or out, you are really figuring out some stuff, but you're paying. You need to just do some self, some self therapy, some self reflection and work on it. Um, I don't know if, it, if I, I know I've gone too, too, too long. Uh, I'm sorry. I did use some of the money to get, uh, to get internet. Uh, because I need internet and I, I, I you know, cause I, I'm late in the game. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, that, that, that is an embarrassment because I use it at work, but I don't do stuff like this. And I, and I tell, I, I tell uh, Melanie, I want to grow up to be like you because why I say that, don't, don't take this wrong. We are older people. Most of us are over 55 and y'all got such a handle over 60 on this technology. If I had this type of handle, I would be, I know how to, I know my work. I know what to do. I don't know how to get it out there. That, like all this beautiful, how you, I don't know how y'all do it. It's just, it, it just marvels me. Um, so I did, I, I conducted my research. I, I did it as of today. I've done workshops and I've gotten sent and I get opinions from my audiences, both students and grown folks. Um, and I, um, I love the, the formatting. I like, I, I, when I wrote my first book, it was, I noticed that people really like the visual, not just the words. So I realized I need to continue on that path. Uh, oh, thank you I, on that path. And so I, I, um, I'm not as, uh, all the typed up stuff, but you can ask me any question. I have over 26, I can tell you what I've done and you can ask me and I'm ready to answer any questions that that, that you, uh, but don't ask me to post anything and all that, but you ask me <laughs> how, how, how I, I, I do what I do, I do. Even my principal, my principal, he's making over $100,000 to He's <laughs> wanting me to do stuff at the school. It, it's just amazing. It, it, there's a light. They say, everybody, you're a light. I go, no, it's because this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's what I'm supposed to do. So, so please ask me a question. I, I'm sorry. I went more than five minutes. I, I didn't mean, to, I didn't want you, to. You had, you had more than five minutes. I mean, 15 minutes was what we had said. Um, I'm sorry. And, and Gladys, may I want to grow up to be like you. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I was fortunate enough to record the, the poets and I, I've, I felt like I'd been to church um, after your session. Uh, I just love listening to you. And the good news for everyone is um, we will be offering one of her workshops uh, on a weekend virtually uh, later this year. So stay tuned. Yeah, we will be able to take advantage of this fabulous workshop. So Gladys, did you use the funds to get help um, get the visuals developed? Like somebody yes. do it for you? And yes. Show you, you how know to... I did. Yeah, I thought so, but I, I just. <laughs> yes, I, I, I would say there's one I, I, uh, that I, it's about ignorance. And I needed that person, Gladys, you bring, to, uh, who is all, oh, bless you. Oh God, you're so kind. Um, it's, it's about ignorance. And it's it's uh, it's it's some kind of way I can show it to y'all, but I don't know how to uh, want to fool with that. But I have it. I tr I really do Girl Scouts on them. And what it is, I had the the visual person. I wanted I wanted it to talk about uh, uh, the and I will I will I will go into this and it's very new. It's the clouds with with rain and the sunshine because the poem is about how ignorance has to 
protected me through the clouds. And, and what the clouds do through my gray days, the sunshine has washed away through your tears and it's cleansed you and, it's, and it's, uh, the, the rain and the sunshine that the brighter days are ahead. And so I needed the, the visual person. So I am kind of particular when I write something, if there's a meaning. I want it when you're looking at it, you see how this one's going, she's reaching out and there's stars of brightness and there's hope. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. When you look at the poem, Nurture, when there's a woman giving love, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so the poems, and then um, have to reflect something that I am saying. And uh, there's one, how deep is your water? Oh, that's a deep poem. And I do that one, even the most cynical of pe people, they, I don't know what you're talking about. And all of a sudden I started doing um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the verse and I started talking and they, and many people break down and I've had people just break down. Not because, I, because they, they, I've cracked something that was so hidden and so deep in them. And when I talk about how deep is your water, I'm not, I, and I say, I'm not, are you, are you, and I go, are you like a mud puddle? Are you like a pool? Are you like a, 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 a river or an ocean? How deep is your water? I'm talking about your emotional waters. You see, are you confined to a pool to, to three to, to 20 feet? Or are you like an ocean? Or perhaps you are a mud puddle that you can walk over. I have, I have some of the, the emotional mud puddles of life gotten you so small inside. So how deep are your waters? How deep are they? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Gladys? Yes. I think we're probably <clears throat> ready to go to the next person, but I do I want to make two points. Yes. You have just in your presentation and you talking about your lack of um, experience with technology and all, this is what Wibbless for. We help each other. We help each other achieve our, our creative dreams. We help each yes. other in the marketplace. We are a community. We help our community. You in so many, and not in those words, but you were espousing the Webla mission statement through that whole thing. And point number two, I want to go to lunch with you and just sit back and just be wow. <laughs> your energy, Jesus. your energy is inf infectious mm -hmm. when you get. Yes, when it you, is. I, I've Very always tough. found it that way. Every time you read, it's like. <laughs> and um, I, whoever you helped you with the the design did a wonderful job because that's yes. a particular skill. Not every artist. Or That's you know, right. A graphic designer can get to it, but it looks like they did a. Oh, a the, I, there's one entitled Life, and I showed it to the kids today, and it's about the puzzles. And they said, Ma'am, this is the day. I love this one because I like how the person did the puzzles. And, and I like when I did a poem called Travel, you have the roads, you have the, the thoughts in this. And, it, and it's just, uh, I should have chose those last, but, I, but, but Melody knows I was having problems getting this. <laughs> you know, I bless your heart, bless your heart, just bless you, bless you. But I do, I do have them, uh, I, right now they're 60, uh, 63. Mm. I'm trying to not get, overpower people, uh, but I realized just like, when you listen to uh, music on, you used to call a, what do you call a, 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 a disc? There are certain songs that resonate. Well, I, I do a several different, I say poems or thoughts because one will evoke an emotion in you and maybe not another one. So I'm trying to reach a broad audience because I'm trying, and I never judge what you say. I never judge because what it is, is for you to see the various steps and what you, because you, most folks don't even think about what I'm talking about because I kind of, they, how do you, how did you come up with that? I don't know, but that was a way for me to connect and pull something out of you, pull something so, out of you. So yeah. Gladys, you need to, you need to let me go so we can get done before your bedtime. Yeah, you're right back. Okay. <laughs> you cut me off. Very good though. But I loved it. I loved it. Yes. Yes. Well, the, right. the bad, the bad news is I have to follow you now. No, I mean, that really, that is the, it would be quite a letdown. No, that's no, <laughs> Okay, so. Okay, Melody. Melody, what did you do on your summer vacation? <laughs> At Disneyland. 
Okay. okay, so let me, uh, I need to share. Everyone mute. Yeah. And. Oh, see, I didn't do all that. Okay. okay. No, don't. It's all right. Don't, yeah, don't worry. Don't. Don't worry. Nobody's, nobody's. Nobody's crazy. judging. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. So y'all please don't judge me either. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I had a, had a plan basically. I've, I've been attending uh, classes at LaSalle since 2007 and it's basically dark room photography, alternative photography. But I wanted to take some classes at the Houston Center for Photography that were very specific, uh, different, different topics on photography. Um, I hadn't planned to spend the entire grand that way. I uh, thought maybe I might purchase some lenses um, or some other accessories uh, for photography. And with uh, my lumen printing, I was also considering buying some glass. Um, I'm kind of into glass and people who sell glass are very proud mm -hmm. of their, their glass. Mm -hmm. So that was the plan. Uh, the, the first class I took at uh, the Houston Center for Photography, or I guess the class I took was the studio, studio lighting still life. And I really enjoyed it, took it with a good friend of mine and uh, with my discount, it was $140. And the first night the instructor had this cool light meter and uh, I fell in love with it. And because I ordered it on Amazon, I had it in time for the next class. So <laughs> I was able to use it throughout the class. Uh, so that was pretty much the, the better part of $360. What happened a few months later was I got a call from the director of the uh, independent living facility where my mom was living. And they have about nine or 10 directors there, I, I can't recall. And they needed uh, uh, por uh, portraits, corporate portraits for them for their website. And they asked me if I would do that. This is definitely not in my wheelhouse. Uh, but I had taken a class and I had a light mirror <laughs> and mm -hmm. I had some reflectors and they had some great, they had some great light. And so I, I got my mom to hold the reflectors for me. So I made back most of the money that I spent for this. So that was, that was good. So, so remember it was April that we got the grant. Uh, then I went to the class in June and then July 16th comes along. And we're mm -hmm. at Archway Gallery for our monthly presentation. And it was Sandra Lawrence. And uh, she talked about public relations. And I don't know what it was exactly that she said, but some little seed was planted in my brain. And there must have been some miracle grow going on. And <laughs> it just went into full bloom. And I thought, maybe. I'm going to open my own studio. And I'd had a really pretty good year, actually. I'd had a lot of critical success with my work. And so I thought maybe this is, this is what I should do. So it's July 16th that we had the meeting. On August 1st, <laughs> I came home. Uh, well, I guess you know, between the 16th and the 1st, I contacted Sawyer Yards to see if they had any space. And they had very little space. There happened to be four available studios in the silos at Sawyer Yards, upstairs, no elevator. And I could choose from the four that I wanted. And so I, I took Studio 132, which was right up the stairs off the landing. And uh, within two weeks, two of the other ones were taken. And then by the middle of the following month in September, they were all taken. There was no more available space. So had I not acted qu as quickly as I did, um, I might not have had the opportunity to get the space. And uh, I looked at Sawyer Yards because there are several, I was familiar with it because several 
Wivla members have studios there, like Gretchen and Marie and Maggie and uh, Rona and you know others as well. So when I came home with the keys that day after writing a check, which now <clears throat> the funds exceeded the thousand dollars that I had received, um, my husband says, "Well, I guess." you must have been really thinking about this for a long time. <laughs> like, I've been thinking about this for just days <laughs> and days. <laughs> so um, he doesn't understand that because he's one of these people that studies an issue for months to decide you know, what television to buy. And by that time, the model's no longer available. So um, we're a little, little different in, in that regard. But it was, it was all very exciting. Um, I've run a family business before. So I, I did have a business background, but not an art business background for sure. And so April, um, August 10th, which was nine days after I moved in, was the first second Saturday of August. And it was a nighttime event. Uh, I, I wasn't totally set up, but I had shelves up and I had a lot of work on the wall and it was, it was all very exciting. And so that was, um, August and then the following month I had a, a nice little reception had a lot of friends in from different parts of my life and um, hadn't made a profit yet and things were going along okay I mean pretty pretty well and uh, then it was <laughs> March <laughs> and everything shut down I mean the, all of the, the venues at Sawyer Yards shut down I can't remember how long. It, it seemed like a lot longer than it actually was. And for artists who totally depended on this money for their income, it was a dark time and many of them left Sawyer Yards. And um, e email was sent out by um, the primary um, owner of the, of the venues saying, hey, there's a bunch of space available. And so, the women that I had come to know that had moved in upstairs with me and I, we all left the second floor. Uh, they all found uh, downstairs studios in the silos. And what was really kind of a fluke was that this email contained information about space at Silver Street. Silver Street is not owned by the same company. I didn't realize that. And so I, and it's a one story facility. So everything's ground floor. Uh, so I was able to get one of the, the nice spaces. They're pretty much the same size as, as the one I have. And it's just across the parking lot. So it's an easy jaunt for me to go back and forth from my studio to Gretchen and Marie's, uh, also Maggie's and, and Rona's. So I'm still there with, with all my friends. Um, I, I hate packing and moving more than just about anything in this world. And so for me to pack and move even across the parking lot uh, was a big deal and just demonstrated how important it was to me. Um, I'm now all moved in. The picture on the right is, is fairly recent. Um, and really, I don't think any of this would have happened without the grant. I, I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have taken the class. I wouldn't have bought the, the light meter, which I've used a lot. I wouldn't have had that gig with uh, the village of River Oaks. I, and, I, and, I, and I don't think I would have done that. It was the catalyst that even though it didn't pay for all of it, it really got me going. And I've had a lot of help from artists I've met as well as the wonderful artists in Wivla who have helped me along in my journey for learning the business of art oh. um, and getting my, mark, my, getting my art out in the marketplace. And for that, I am truly grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm still having fun. <laughs> Great. So I'm gonna stop sharing because I need to share. I'm gonna move on to Maggie in the, in the interest of time. And Maggie was smart. Maggie, um, and I'm going to take the spotlight off of me if I can find myself. Oh, here we go. And oh, there's Gretchen. And I'm going to share this. And I'm going to share the sound. And I'm going to 
hopefully this is going to make it all work. Maggie um, was smart and she pre-recorded hers. Oh, I know. With Gretchen's help. Yeah. And your editing. Hi, I'm Maggie Baldwin. I'm the 2019 Echo Fund winner, uh, co-winning with uh, Melody Law. I joined Wibla approximately 2005 when a friend of mine, a photographer, Barbara Beyond, who no longer is a member of the Wibla, uh, brought me to a meeting where I met Peggy Sexton, who became my very good friend and best supporter. Um, for those who are new to Wibla, the thing about Wibla is that it is extremely supportive of all the other artists. We, whether you're a writer, uh, whether you're a photographer, whether you paint, whatever you do, everyone is very supportive of you. Um, the way I decided to use my Echo Fund is to uh, go to the school, the glass sales school. I'd been there once before for a photography class, but since I've been doing painting and drawing and that sort of thing, I wanted to take a different type of class. So I took my first class with uh, Arielle Masson. She does abstract painting. And when I went to sign up for the class, Patrick Palmer told me, you're going to have a rough time in this class. And I just thought, OK, sure. Anyway, I had to have his pr approval to take the class. And uh, true to form, that was correct. Everything I did at first was wrong. I could not get anything right. About halfway through the class, things started clicking. I finally figured out what I was supposed to be doing and was able to do it. The three works you see here on the wall and the uh, drawing on the easel are the things that I created in that class. It still has my style of painting, but it's it's informed a little differently than, than most of my work is. Okay, towards the end of that first class, I found something that I really, really liked, and then it's created this series called Dance, Play, Celebrate. And I uh, even got to where I was doing some more drawings for that, and it kind of carried over into the next uh, section, which ended up being half a session at school because COVID hit. Nevertheless, I kept working on the series and, and I really liked the work that came out of that. So even though I've already spent my thousand dollars, I keep going and I uh, finish up with a part of it with drawing and decided I really wanted to finish one more um, painting class. And the class I'm in now is actually painting. And it's brought me to this new series, which is called I Love Trees. This one is complete, the other two are works in progress. Um, so that shows you my journey from, from the thousand dollars and I have never spent money more wisely than the money I've spent <laughs> with, uh, with Echo Fund. And there is one thing else I'd like to, to mention to everyone and that is uh, Wibla does something every other year called uh, What's it called? Collaboration. Collaboration. That's a collaboration. And I've participated in most of them, except for one that I was just overwhelmed and couldn't finish. But through the collaboration, I've met um, and made a lot of her. friends. I've collaborated with Peggy Sexton, um, with uh, Andrea Wagespack. Wagespack. I hope that's not too much of a mess up on her name. Anna Phillips. Um, Ronald Lesser, Pat Conrad, and uh, Janice Smith. I've even actually some of the time been a writer, but there's not anything that will grow you more than to work with another artist. It's unbelievable. So in addition to thanking you so much for the Echo Award, I want to encourage everyone the next time that a collaboration comes around, find a partner. Thank you. Awesome. I'm pretty brief. Could I say something more? Yes. Okay. Um, Melody reminded me of something that I should have put in there. Um, I sold the painting from my first class, which Yay! actually the first class. 
and and because of the work that I'm doing now, the I Love Trees thing, I may have a commission piece coming up too. So basically, I guess I get to start all over with my thousand <laughs> years. <laughs> that gift that keeps on giving. There you go. My, the husband, the accountant doesn't think that way. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I wanted to end with Maggie because I just loved your your ending message. It just yeah. put a nice little bow yeah. on on the whole set of presentations. Thank you. I, and see, there's a consensus there. <laughs> <laughs> so then. So, Gretchen, did you bring the drums? <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> she, she brings the tiara, but not the drums. Well, well, while she's getting that. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. I got drums. Got it, OK. OK, that's me. Right. We ready? Yes, we need a drummer. OK, so this, if y'all can see me, okay. this is the visual this says artist but it's a visual the visual so we're going to have i don't have anyone here to do the drawing i'm not eligible so okay tell me when to stop <laughs> okay <laughs> if i can put this down without dropping okay. it Can y'all read it? Oh, no, Marie! <laughs> oh. Congratulations, awesome. Marie. Hey. Okay, and this, hmm. Well, it says writers, but it's upside down. And so, but if I turn it over, all the names will fall out. So. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh my God! Are oh you kidding my... me? Oh, that's so good. And okay, so it's not rigged. Okay. Wow. No, it's all it's all on the up and up. Congratulations, ladies. Yes. And um, you'll need to get with the treasure. Yes. <laughs> I was researching Airbnbs today, <laughs> just in case I won. <laughs> well, I guess there's a way to make that all fit together. I don't know. Um, well, congratulations. Um, this, is, this is great. It's wow. and speaking, speaking for the congratulations four of us from, from 2019, it seems like it's been a long time. And keep in mind, y'all, we're going to have more presentations About in September. 40. That's right. Okay. And uh, were there any more uh, member announcements? Um, Can I just say something real quick? Um, Who's talking? I can't. Right oh, now. yes. Yes. Well, I, this is the most, I'm just astounded by the most productive <laughs> amount of things in just such a short amount of time. And I just am blown away. And you all are just, so creative and I I I like I don't feel like I well I won't say that particularly with Gladys but um I I sometimes think what in the world are you doing with these women but I get so much like osmosis and I feel like we should have either paid to, for the <laughs> for the for it to come to the meeting or we should have taken up a collection and been <laughs> the worst like when Gladys, I mean, preach, you know, I mean, uh -huh. I, I mean I've got <laughs> chill bumps. I just, uh, everything that everybody said, I've been in a real down place. And um, this, this really is, is helping. And I, I just yeah. love you all. I'm just, I think you're just amazing. And you, 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 what the thing is, some of the thing is, I mean, like I'm 84 and I don't, I, I couldn't figure out how to, when we enter something with a, 
with a picture from a like from our um, cell phone. I don't understand what we do with that. And so uh, when she said, you know, the technology is beyond us, but I'm going to talk to June. I had already um, to, to, to give me some advice about how to do things because the young man that took, uh, he calls me my, I'm his Texas mom, his Houston mom. Um, and he's a photographer, but he's had a terrible uh, back operation and he can't lift anything for three months. And he took the picture that I entered when we did the thing at, uh, was it Bayport or something? Um, and so I thought, well, I don't even know how to send. That's the reason I didn't agree to do the, the, the uh, virtual uh, thing is I don't, I didn't know, I don't know how to do all that. But anyway, I'm gonna find out. And I just think you all are remarkable. Just love you to pieces. Okay. Well, love you too. I, I will help you. Okay. Yeah, we can. We, uh, we can figure this out. I will help you. Um, Melody, I have a show that uh, this is Cheryl Rossetti, owner. Hey. Cheryl. <laughs> owner. Owner. Yes. <laughs> I. Like you're I in charge, Cheryl. Cheryl. <laughs> Um, I fell for a scam, everyone. So this is why when I had my computer fixed, they gave me the name of owner. So uh -huh. unfortunately, I have not been receiving a whole bunch of emails and stuff. But anyway, uh, Donna Perkins and I, um, she's a fellow member, and yeah. she and I are doing a two-person show at Archway Gallery opening, uh, oh, next week, the end of next week on May 1st. And this is what our postcard looks like. Hey. Cool. And it's May 1st to June 3rd. And that's it. So um, everyone is invited. We have limited hours at this point. Um, I would check with the website. Again, it depends, you know, red, orange, and everything in the city. But we are definitely open for Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. And possibly in May will be open almost daily, but I would check the website. You know, so much is out of our hands as we all know. Right. Sure. <laughs> so will Donna be back in town? <laughs> Donna is coming back on the 23rd in three days. Today's her birthday. That's and, right. Okay. And she, she was in New Mexico. So she is, uh, she's been floating around the United States for the last almost month. Okay. So she is going to come back so creative. Plus, <laughs> so congratulations! I got the postcard and it looked great. Um, oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, you I'm too. on their mailing list. Um, so I assume, uh, Melody, that you announced the biannual this weekend. Oh no, I I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, not, not yet. No. So there's like okay. So for everyone who has a. Uh, studio at Sawyer Yards this weekend bef between 5 and 9 p.m., not the morning, uh, there will be the biannual. And first so most, <laughs> pardon? First one since COVID. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. And so uh, all the studios or most of the studios anyway will be open uh, for people to come by, walk, walk through, look at art, talk to artists. Mm -hmm. um, the nighttime events are usually pretty well attended. Uh, we're, we're pretty excited. It's, it's, <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, it's, been a while. It, it's, yes, been, it's a while. been a while. And, and attendance has been growing. It's at second Saturdays. It's been, but this is, you know, and the, I think there's going to be a food truck there. Yes, yeah. a food truck. Yeah, they're, they're discouraging serving food in the studios, <laughs> but there will be a, a food, a food truck. Um, and 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 masks masks are required in the in yeah. the open areas. If you happen to go to an artist studio where they don't require them, it's up to you if you want to take it off. Everyone has been super. That's coming to my studio anyway has been super good about wearing their masks. Wow. Um, the main topic of conversation when everyone walks in is how they've had their shots. You know, we yeah. feel like we're at the vet's office. Yeah. Have you had your shots? It's like yes, I've, I've had my <laughs> shots. A bunch of people came into our studio last time and said, oh, yeah, we've had our shots, you know, because we had our yeah. masks on, especially right. when we came in. Um, there, I, I'm glad, you know, everybody had masks on. The sign was off the back door at the silos. I'm not sure why, but um, pretty much everybody had a mask on. So I was really happy. 
So yeah, it's been it's every been since the two of us had the vaccines. So it, yeah. it's pretty much was our first time to open again. And I saw Debbie's on your por wet member portal, so she must have joined. And, and make it again. There you go. Yeah. You got it. Hello, can you hear Hi. me? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. oh, my goodness. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh. Okay. Um, I've been waiting a whole year for this exhibition. Um, I have a body of work uh, that I have been working on for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to have this exhibition last year at this time at the art gallery at the University of Houston Clear Lake. And mm -hmm. of course it got postponed, but it is happening. And uh, the show will be from May 17 through June 25th. Yes. And I will send out as soon as we get some uh, press release and graphics, I will be sending that out. I, you, you just don't know how ecstatic I am. Uh, <laughs> yes, we do. Or work, work that I have put my life into for 20 years uh, is going to finally, you know, come to fruition. So Anyway, That's fabulous, very, Joe. Right, so, right. Joe, have you sent this information to uh, Haley, the newsletter also? Uh, not yet, because I just, <laughs> I, I actually just found out last week. <laughs> awesome. Well, the deadline yeah. is like tomorrow, okay? So. Oh, okay. It's really Do today. It, yes. but, yeah. So y'all, if you got these announcements, um, newsletter at wibla.org and um, Haley is awesome about checking, but Keep in mind, today's the official <laughs> deadline. And um, since she's giving me till tomorrow, I'm, I'm gonna let you ride on my coattails and beg for forgiveness. I, I have a suggestion. <laughs> since I know you did one Wivla outing, you know, to U of H, well, that would be a neat outing to go and see Joe's show. It would be. Wow. Oh, definitely. Yes. We, need to, we need to put we something together. Cars together, we could just meet up there you know, yeah. yeah, pick a date and meet up there. Good idea. Very doable. And, okay. you know, I'm, I'm a former and teacher. Seeing, whoa, now that is the type of thing that once a member puts in all their information on the calendar, they can put in, okay, Webla meetup on this particular day. Yep. You go through my exhibition. Oh, that's a great idea. Put it on the calendar. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and y'all that that are you know want to get on the website and get your account set up and everything and want to put something on the calendar and you're, if you're unsure how to do it send email to info at wibble.org and yes. i'll look at it and you know get in touch okay yep so happy right. for you joe hi jerry hey jerry i didn't see you on the <laughs> <laughs> this is here. wow She's been she's been lurking. Everyone looks I've so been good. Lurking. I've, been, you know, <laughs> I've been right here listening. I love You're looking class. great. You didn't fall asleep. <laughs> no, I didn't. I wrote, I we had lunch on my front <laughs> porch and I hadn't slept the night before and I'd had a long class in the morning and I fell asleep all through lunch. I was just, <laughs> It's a wonder I didn't fall off my chair. <laughs> Jerry, do you remember that um, when I got that grant many, many years ago to go to New, uh -huh. New Mexico to Ghost Ranch? I think you were the one that told oh, me. I, oh, how about that? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I went to Ghost Ranch for, oh, I guess a week. Oh. Yeah, and, and I'm still Facebook friends with um, the teacher who's in Costa Rica and has gotten pretty elderly, Jan Hart. She's a, oh my God, she's a magnificent watercolor artist. <laughs> but yeah, no, that, I don't even know. That was a long time ago. Oh my God. <laughs> I went to a Mine Red Craighead workshop for five days. And then I went to go, oh, it was so worth it. Oh my God. Oh, it was so wonderful. And then for years after that, I went for about five to seven days to New Mexico by myself. And just 
that, that uh, it was, I mean, we went, my husband and I went back twice and took other workshops. Uh, <laughs> I, I do want to go back to New Mexico again. Um, it's on my list um, of things to do. And they're going to be offering Why things. You don't have to quarantine. Yeah. 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 So um, help the place recover so that they, you know, can know they can keep doing this stuff. But um, that thousand dollars stretched a long way back then. <laughs> <laughs> Paid for a workshop yeah. and airfare and car rental. I can't oh, do that. That's excellent. Yeah. Well, ladies, this has been a fabulous evening. Are there any really more happy. announcements? Let's eight o'clock. I have I a know, I know. I there are, we have to say. That, you know, check out, but you know, it's like bedtime. I'm going to study with Gladys. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to for years, but now I'm determined, Gladys. If you're still I just here. wanted to mention a couple of things uh, after Ms. Owner talked about getting hacked. Um, so uh, in the last week, Keanu Reeves started following me on Instagram. Whoa. <laughs> are you, are you Here's crazy? the thing. Keanu Reeves is not on any social media. <laughs> oh man, well, Keanu Reeves follows me on Twitter. Yeah, I, I blocked that person. <laughs> and then I got an email uh, from, I forget what the person's name was, that uh, was wanting to buy a painting for his wife for the their anniversary. Oh, I've had that one. I had that email. I've had that one. I've had yeah. that one. Yeah. yeah, I promptly blocked that one and deleted it. So I just want to say, apparently, there's something going on. So watch out. Oh, There's yeah, a lot of yeah, single yeah. men that want to be my Facebook friend. Oh my! Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that on I'm Instagram. How many doctor. guys? Yeah, I've been getting. I've gotten like three of those, and it's like, who are you? How did you find me, and why? <laughs> just delete, 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 delete. Okay, I hope I you just have block, not. Block them. I hope no, you have not clicked on Sandy Strongberg's. Uh, yeah, no. She was hacked. Uh, do not click on any uh, Dropbox downloads from Sandy Stromberg. That was hacked. Oh, really? Really? Don't take, oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Don't take any friend invitations from me unless you, especially if you know you're already my friend, but otherwise, right. if I send it, because my daughter told me, and then Ron um, from the studios sent me a mess private message saying you know that he didn't think it was hacked and neither did my daughter he thinks they copied something and used it as a friend i don't know what they did but what's creepy is when you get a friend request from someone who's deceased that's oh yes. yeah, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a message yeah, from Blake. mine are still alive <laughs> yeah yeah I, yeah I, I managed my mother's account as a memorial account and relatives were telling me that they were getting friend requests from her. So that was, you know, well, I had I contact Facebook. I get those Facebook. kinds of messages, but not on Facebook. <laughs> well, I, I fell for uh, Amazon quote calls, seven oh. phone calls. Oh no, no. Oh. That it, it was obviously on the seventh uh, phone call, I buckled all the others I eliminated and I, ugh. Just don't do that. <laughs> don't or do Microsoft. That. If yeah. you're looking for love, if you're looking for love in all the wrong places, play words <laughs> with friends, and every guy that comes in and asks to play a game with you will start a conversation without yeah. fail. Oh dear, yeah. good to know. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> all right. So okay. So I think this conversation's devolved. Good night. <laughs> this sounds like a great time. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Thank night, you so everybody. much. And congratulations to our two oh, new recipients. Conversation. Yeah, I, I might edit out a little a couple of things. No, so you can okay. edit out of the recording, but that was what as if we'd gone out to dinner afterwards. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Good night, ladies. Good night. Good night. Good night.